sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Hour. Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to Monday here on VaporTrails.tv, the new night for the Haze Hour. As per normal, my name is David Dawn. It usually is every day, as per normal. I really did that well, didn't I? And my op, well, my partner in crime, my old mucker, as it were, mucker with a name. Over there in the right hand side is Kat. How are you doing tonight, Cock? All right. I'm absolutely fine at the moment. I haven't broken anything. Everything seems to be working, so I'm fine. And no dribbles. Not at the moment. <laughs> that might, give it time. I was going to say that might change. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've had a bit of a giggle with chat early on because they've been asking all kinds of weird and wonderful questions and coming up with all kinds of weird and wonderful things to say. And actually, after this weekend. We are, we are full of the joys of spring, aren't we? Are we? Well, I am. Are you not? Full of something. Well, I am. Um, but you... Aye, okay. Well, I'm glad you're full of the joys of spring. <laughs> full of I'm something. I'm still ready to hibernate. Are you? Aye. I know the feeling only too well, actually. Isn't it funny that you, you put, you know, you get to a certain age and you put your backside on the set A and then for some strange reason, I understand not why, your eyes close and you're just checking for pinholes and next thing you know it's 11 o'clock at night. I know. I know. I know that feeling only too well. Yes. Disco Des has just said that chair looks so empty without Keith. Give it to Thursday. <laughs> Be back then. Be an interesting show on Thursday. All kinds to talk about. Some of which we might glance over tonight. But tonight, tonight on the show, I'm going to get me balls out. We said that, didn't we? What? Get me balls out. Me balls of cotton. What else could it have been, Chris? Not another thing. I mean, I immediately thought of cotton. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, 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 Kat's been inventing, and she told me something this afternoon. I've tried it, and I'm going to do it live without the aid of a safety net, or a vest, or even a pair of underpants. That's how good that one is. Um, <laughs> what? Sorry. Well, yes. This will be, this will be fun. I've Keep watching. I've got so many sets of chat and, and screens running, I have got no idea where to look. What was that? Hairy wolf. I, what? Nothing, I never said a thing. No, I was just reading a little bit in chat that Nelly Scroggett <laughs> thought of um, hairy wool. Mm -hmm. Um, no. I'm just not going to go there because I think it would probably be rather dangerous so to do. I think probably the best thing to do is probably play the titles and then do the show and I'll probably remember what we're going to do then. That'd be good, won't it? We'll do that then. And first, Let's go for it. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do the titles. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is lovely to see you here. Hello, good evening and welcome to the Here's Hour. There we go, there we go. That, that was the titles, the new titles. Because we only realised after VT talked last week, Sav and I, that we didn't play the titles in. So I've made sure we played the titles in. Chris, uh -huh. Saturday. 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 Wasn't it fabulous? Oh. I had to stay home um, and sort of coordinate bits and pieces here and I was on Twitter and I could not believe um, what was coming forward on Twitter the amount of photographs the amount of reports
reports. They were coming in non-stop. Um, and it just and from the you know Europe wide. We're not talking just the UK. Europe wide. And I was trying to get them all onto Facebook and sort of coordinate it all. And the more I was doing so, the more I was taken aback. I think, my God, I, I thought this was a good idea, but I didn't realise how successful it would be. Um, I really didn't. I've been... There's, there's that... Where's, that's the singular vapour in Neuss. Yeah. In Neuss, in Germany. Is it Neuss? Mm -hmm. Standing alone. Now, when you think about that, look at that. There is one man by himself, but not by himself, because there was th hundreds and thousands of people out. I'm, I'm just flicking through these. Um, oh, that's Newcastle. That's Dave Kidson. I don't know where that one is. Can't really tell. Here TV, would that be Hungary? Yes, it is. Hungary, Starbucks, <laughs> other coffee shops are available. I mean, there's, there's loads and loads, that's a burger, there's loads and loads of pictures up there on Facebook, the beauty of face. Um, and there's another man by himself, that's um, outside Radio Lancashire. It's Vince, isn't it? I think look, so, yeah. It's, it's, look at this there, Steffi. And I mean, when you think, you know, I'm, I'm calling out odd names of people I recognise, but how many folks met people I hadn't met before that were vapors on the Saturday? Look at it all. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I'm, I'm so, so impressed by all of that. But there's another little bit of something I wanted to show everybody. I don't know whether they're aware of it. Um, Mark that does uh, Mark Hamburg, that mm -hmm. does DE talk on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's, um, he's a bit good with the old graphics -y stuff. He likes doing that kind of thing. Um, and, 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 he's done a map of where all the, all the vape mates were throughout Europe. Now, Chris and I just sat before the show and counted up. And there were hashtag BBC vape mates going on in 10 countries. And here it is, look at that. Look at that. Though we've got Scotland, we've got England, we've got Wales, we've got Holland, we've got Germany, we've got Denmark, we've got uh, Austria. Did I say Austria before? Might be 11. We've got uh, Hungary, and if I scroll down, there's France. And this is not finished yet, it says at the top, look at that. It's not fully completed yet. We know that there's more to go on. I mean, where else, where else are you going to get a situation where at 11 o'clock UK time, 10 or 11 countries throughout Europe had people turning out to their local TV or radio station to make a point. I have never been so proud to be part of a group in my life. Um, Entropy72 saying, what happened to IDUS? Did they not get the memo? Apparently not. Um, but I am told they will definitely get the next one um, and they'll be up for it. I'm not pointing any fingers. I mean, they just might not have been aware of what was going on or they might not have been able to get anything organised uh, in time. But there's something else being organised as well for all of you uh, Italian speakers. And this has come up and I've got to say a big thank you to Steffi. Um, and if I could ever pronounce her screen name, I would, but I can't. Um, and, and it's this. Svapo de la protesta. Il giorno, domenica 26 gennaio. Il luogo, Milano. So in Milan, in Milan. They're all going to get together. Um, and this is a biggie in Italy on the 26th of January. 26th of January. Um, and I think it might be a good day to organise a further excursion, as it were, into what we did. Now, somebody's just said in chat, and I'm sorry, it's, it's scrolled off the top, that we got roundly ignored. 
I don't think that's true, do you, Chris? No, absolutely not. Um, I think it was, I had somebody say, only three turned up at this meeting. What a shame. And I said, it's not a shame at all. The point is, three were there. Um, and that made it a success. And to me, what became blatantly obvious when I was reading all these tweets that were coming in, the success stories were greatly from the ones where the BBC did ignore people. Because at a lot of those meets, there were people like MPs, MEPs, um, people from the local council. All of those people were there. Mm. And they were seeing this. And an MEP doesn't like to be ignored. Absolutely not. And, and as Moonlit has just said in chat, even one person at a meet makes it a noteworthy data point. And that, that, that's actually right. That is That's actually right. right. It's a data point. It means something happened there. And the number of people that there, it's, it's, it is important, yes, but it's not of major importance. As we've just said, 11 countries involved in something that, hell, think about it. If you were, oh, I don't know, if you were any business, if you were any organisation, to get 10 countries all out together at once, doing the same thing at once, You'd give your left arm for that and your right arm. And Rachel Coffey said, the BBC rather conspicuously ignoring the meets is attention in and of itself. And absolutely right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go full screen and tell you this. Um, Chris Choi's production team um, has asked for footage of the BBC vape meets. And Andy Sutton is, even as we speak, busily doing his magic to pull together a little segment to go across to the Tonight Show. They've asked for the footage. I mean, if, you can't knock that, not in any way, shape or form. I should also remind people, and we'll have to remind them every show, that the, uh, the ESIG show, the Tonight programme, will be on the 23rd of January, not the 16th as previously advertised. It's a week later on the 23rd. But I think this is, I think this is fabulous. I really do, Chris, do you not? I mean... Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you I, go. I Moon. can't praise them enough. And the, as, as you rightly say, if one person joins in, just one person turns up, it's a bit like that thing that happened years ago, and I can't even remember. It, that's the point I make, and this happened years and years ago. But there was a hands across the world. Mm-hmm some sort of protest where people went out and it was basically the idea of holding hand, you know, holding your hands out, right? Everybody did that. And it worked so well, I remember it 20 years later. Exactly right. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm this gonna, is the same. I'm gonna read some stuff from chat. Spaz TV said this, he remembers the night that it was born. Mark Shaw said the fact is it's actually happened, it's history and history can always be written up at a later date. Yoda says it's snowballing like nobody's business. Uh, Jackie Plage has said agreed. It was great considering such short notice and no professional central organisation. Everybody did it off their own bat. Very boring said 11 countries is also close to half of the EU. And Woolly Vapen has said this year will be the start of something magical. And then all gets chimed in with said and said if it was one three or 203 you made a difference and you were noticed and you did and you were and i'm proud of every last person that was involved either there or tweeting or even just sending good wishes i i i kind of get over to people how chuffed this has made me feel I, I, and chris knows what i'm like don't you it, it's well, it's not you, not you alone. I must admit, you know, I, I can't explain how proud I felt of everybody on Saturday. It was just the most amazing feeling to see all these tweets coming in, and to know we had record of it all with all the photographs, and then seeing the video footage yesterday. Just amazing, absolutely amazing. It, it, it is. It's absolutely fantabulous. Would it be very wrong of me to play the Newcastle footage in again? 
Absolutely not. Come on, I'd like to see a reminder of it. I'm going to play the Newcastle footage in again. I hope nobody minds. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I make an apology right now because I'm nowhere near as good an editor as Mr. Swaff. Andy Sutton, but he's got all the footage and he's going to put that together. It's going to be fabulous. Here it goes. We're actually stood outside the BBC studios, even now, ready to have a vape meet because today is the day of hashtag BBC vape meet. I'm David Dorn and I'm stood here with Angelica Schneider, who is the prospective MEP for the North East, are you not? Yes, that's, that's true, for the Liberal Democrats. For Liberal Democrats, as you've just heard, and I'm so pleased to see you here this morning. Thank you. And I know the Liberal Democrats have been very, very busy about e-cigs in the European Parliament. What's your take on the whole thing? Well, I think it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I know that you've been a, a part of uh, the campaign who, who actually led um, the fight for e to be available across uh, Europe, freely available. And I think you've, uh, you've had an amazing success so far already because um, you managed to turn it around from member states saying we want a pharmaceutical solution and have e treated as medicines to um, the way now that e are seen as uh, consumer products that need to be regulated for uh, certain standards but um, it should be freely available across the EU and I think you've, you've done tremendously well there. Lovely, thank you for that. John, what's made you turn out this morning? Um, I'm an ex-smoker of seven weeks. Uh, I've tried everything on the market over many years. I've smoked for 55 years since I was 11. Uh, nothing gets us off the cigarettes, but that has. And I say after seven weeks you've got a VTR then. I had that to start. To start? I went straight to the very top. That's, that's <laughs> probably the way to do it. That's excellent stuff. And that has stopped me smoking. And I'm very pleased with it. I'm very happy with it. It's turned into a bit of a hobby. Yes. Uh, it's very enjoyable. It's doing us no harm. It's doing nobody else any harm. Please leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. Well, there you are. There's a message for every MEP and every legislator everywhere. Leave us alone. All the time. And a proper vape meet it was. People were swapping notes left, right and centre about various different devices they'd been using. There was much conversation going on in all manner of ways. Alright, that's, that's an original K-Fan. Um, K-Fan Lite. And so it carried on for the rest of the time we were there. While we waited for the BBC to come and interview somebody, Angelica Schneider spent quite a lot of time speaking to just about everybody that had turned up. We waited patiently very, very patiently, but no BBC. While we waited, I spoke with Kimberly and Darren, two very recent vapors that had only heard about the vape mates the day before. Now, you've only just heard about the whole campaign to save e yep. mm -hmm. How did you find out about it? Um, friend. Um, actually, the man who we get our vapes from, um, he shared a link last night on Facebook. Yes, and posted a link last route. night, yeah, yeah. we just had a look at it last night, checked yourself out. Thought would come along and show some support. Brilliant, and you've, you've turned out to support the whole campaign. Definitely. E-seeks from being taken off the market. Hundred percent, definitely. Let me ask you first off, how long have you been using e-seeks? Uh, eight or nine weeks now. Eight, eight or nine weeks. Or nine weeks. And how many cigarettes did you smoke the day before? Smoke fifteen to twenty. Okay. Uh, easy. Now smoke none. And, and how hard did you find it to make the switch? Literally easy. <laughs> Literally, literally easy. Yeah, un unbelievable. Myself, uh, 25 years without a day off cigarettes. Uh -huh. uh, tobacco, rolling tobacco, um, 20 cigarettes a day. Mm. Um, picked up one of these overnight, never touched them since. Got cigarettes in the house, see them on a daily basis, not right. interested in the slightest. Has not been an issue at all. Fitness is important um, to both of us. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're um, together. I've never ran the, to the top of the street before. I'm now doing over a mile and a half a day mm. on a treadmill which I could never have done I was, I was topping about two miles when I was smoking cigarettes. Now I'm a f four, four to five miles easy, like, so it's a massive impact on our lives and our fitness. Massive, massive. Um, and I can still have something, it seems to me, like, it, it still feeds the habit, um, and I know that it's brilliant for us. I know it's, no, it's not harming us either, so... That's superb. Mm -hmm. Yes. Superb. And just when we were talking before, you said you'd, you'd seen my little punchline. We did. Go on, I dare you. Don't <laughs> let the bastards grind you down. Good on <laughs> And our new couple took advice from all kinds of people. Again, learned about everything that it was possible to learn at a vape meet because this was a proper vape meet. At the same time, certain of our members 
took notice of cars that were passing and at every given opportunity leafleted them. Go for it, Tiffy. Cliffy kept on leafleting, we kept on waiting, and one of the presenters departed the studios but didn't have time to talk to us, unfortunately. I spoke to Simon about that and what his feelings were. Now, Simon, you've turned up here this morning outside the BBC in Newcastle, and you've just seen presenter Sue Sweeney come walking out in a massive rush to go hurtling off to a gig. What's your thoughts? I think there's a potential there to save millions of lives, and she's just walked past and just ignored us potential here to have something groundbreaking. How long have you been using e-cigs? I've been on e-cigarettes now for 20 months. And what sort of stuff are you using? Um, I started off on the, the on the, the Generation 1 and then I moved on to Generation 2. Now I'm on a Provari and the Kfuns. Excellent stuff. And uh, how many cigarettes a day did you smoke prior was, to taking up e-cigs? smoking 20 cigarettes a day. I was going to the garage, I was buying a pack of cigarettes, maybe a meal deal and spending roughly about £10 a day, so I'm saving £300 a month. That's not bad going. Have you bought anything nice out of it? Not really. <laughs> Me wife's got all the money. We tried and we tried and we kept on trying to get the BBC to come out and talk to us, but they wouldn't. So as the time approached 2 o'clock we decided the best thing to do was shoot off to South Shields to the new Crown Hotel, where we knew we'd get a warm welcome. And there it was. That was Newcastle as ever was, and 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 just it was it was emotional. It was it was just it was just emotional meeting up with everybody there. And what a cracking day! My apologies for any video that I didn't show particularly well, but it was just brilliant. And reading through chat, um, people are up for doing it again somehow, somewhere. Weatherspoons appears to be gaining traction. There is also a thread going on on UK Vapors, which I'm aware of, which we're going to touch on on Thursday night, where there's more and more ideas coming up. Um, this is all good stuff. I, I'm, I'm thrilled to bits. I'm thrilled to little blue monkey you know. Are you not, Chris? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every time I see it, I just fill with pride at how wonderful it all was. It, it was it, it was a fabulous fabulous time absolutely was and it's gonna have a brilliant knock on effect I'm, I'm just yes i'm gonna go at the adverts before i go all stupid and make myself look you know soft <laughs> like a pile of clots that looks at everybody that doesn't speak jody right we'll be back in a couple of minutes don't go anywhere Safer6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out
and we're back in the room here on the Here's Hour on Thursday night. It's the 13th of January. That's when it is. 10 days before ITV shows the ASIG program. Um, now, those of you that were watching last week may well recall that I said there'd be a challenge, Dave. And there is a challenge, Dave. And, but the challenges need to come via Twitter, please, if you will, because sometimes I'm going to need to prepare for them. But I have seen in chat somebody was suggesting that I go with either 54 or 72 milligram Druze to drink it the same as I did the 24. I must respectfully decline. And it's not because I'm scared. It's just because it's not really a good example to show to everybody. It's safe enough to do, um, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, because, you know, once is enough. If anybody needs to see that it can be done with 24 milligram, which is, you know, kind of a par for the course juice, that's fine. But other challenges... Great. And I've kind of set myself one today. You should be able to see on close up cam, if I can remember which one it is, it would be that one. We have there a Kraken. And the Kraken is currently wicked with cotton. I shall zoom in so that you can see how it is wicked. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to re-wick it and re-wick it live. There you go, look. Now, you're probably wondering, what the hell has he thought about that for? Well, this is where me balls come out, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> um, let's go to the main cam, and, and I shall hold up me two balls. These are me balls. These are balls of cotton, which I purchased at Hobbycraft. It's cotton. I keep calling it cotton wool. But one, it's, what is it you call it? Double knitting, Chris? Double knitting. This, this, mm -hmm. is, this is double knitting. And to give you some idea of, uh, of how thick it is, it's not very... There, there's the screwdriver I'm going to be using. So you can see... And the other one is a textured yarn. It's just called a textured yarn. Uh, it's called... Oh, I see. It's called... Amongst us knitters, you see. Oh, I see. It, this is Rico Fashion Summer, it says here. 65 metres. And it's a bit like a boot lace. Is what it's like. A textured yarn. Right. What 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 Kat said, it's it's a textured yarn. See? Bloke, no nothing. I know absolutely nothing. So what I thought I would do, just to show you how this all comes together and how well it works and how well it wicks and stuff, I thought I would redo this here cotton wicking that I've done in here, which means obviously, firstly, removing the setup as it stands. So I'll zoom into it a little bit, if I can, get it centred. There we go. And let's get a start and do it. I'll take the old gubbins out first. And you will see, this is what I call the snot cloth. It's where all the crap goes. And I got that one a bit long. And I'm, I'll take the... Uh, I'll take the coil out as well and that can just be wrapped and pushed to one side. So now I need to make the coil. That's the first step in using this kind of stuff. So I've got myself some 0.25 canthal here and the thing to do is to find out what the diameter of the hole is where your wick is going to go through, which I've just done. That screwdriver fits perfectly. So I'm going to wind the coil on there. And because this is 0.2 canthal, I'm going to give it on here a good six turns. I'll try and do it on camera. I don't know how well I'm doing this. Not at all by the looks of it. Move that out of the way, David. That's two, three, four, five, six. And then snug it down because I want these coils fairly tight together and give them a good good tug. Gentlemen, you know what I mean. A good tug is worth its weight in gold. I've always thought that. And then let's get it clagged in into the right place. Now I'm going to be doing this in Geordie parlance, arse about face, so you'll forgive me. Pull that round there and fasten it off. Arse about face means backside foremost. That probably makes no difference to anybody either. And then I want the top one on, 
and I need to just space that out properly and keeping that screwdriver in makes life a lot simpler now the beauty about this is you don't need to do any dry burns or anything like that that's it that's as much as you need to do coil wise you can just wind it and clag it straight on there's no heaty uppies there's no messing about with it just wind it and clag it straight on and then you need to get your cotton boot lace and you need to reach it to the bottom of the tank over the top back down to the bottom and cut it off then the fiddly bit starts and it's going to start by threading it and this is where we need to get right close up okay so it's going to thread down the coil where the screwdriver was but obviously that's too broad as you can see so what you need to do is get your juice of choice and just dribble a little bit on like so and then you can roll this up just like you would roll a mesh wick just like that and as you can see with proper proper whittling it goes quite stiff if you roll it between your fingers the right way it goes quite stiff and then you can get it into the hole down the coil in through the hole that much easier this is very difficult to do when you can't see what you're doing I can't see how far in I've got it story of my life it's doing okay keep it going I'm doing what I can you might need a little bit of wire just to poke it down never heard that one before Chris no, that's a new one on me there we go and push it down until it sits at the bottom of the tank and then you need to be doing exactly the same on the other side but it's a lot easier on the other side because you don't have the coil in the way so you can just then find yourself what we used to call in the trade a progger and prog it through now I'm just going to use an allen key prog it through and that's it that's all you need to do and then as you see you've got it down at the bottom there you've got it down at the bottom there so now all I need to do is just put a little dribble of juice on because it's a bit like um, a siphon once you've got juice going right the way through it just keeps on wicking and wicking and what I'll do is I'll just fill my tank up doink done and it's that easy now you can see it's quite a highly coloured juice to start with is this now there'll be a few folks I'm sure saying why didn't you wash it or anything first well the beauty behind this is you're going to burn it for a little while because you want to see how well it's working and for this purpose I'll go to camera 2 here we are camera 2 and I shall just hold it in front of camera 2 so you can see what's going on there you are as you can see and let's just give it a clip and off it goes and the, the actual burning of the wick or the heating of the, the, the coil rather not the wick will actually get things going you can see it's starting to really get itself away there now okay so time I think to uh, stick the top on and give it a drag you saw how quick I did that I was expecting that lasting 20 minutes Chris <laughs> how long did it take you when you did yours um not very long at all the first time I did it I did it the hard way and then I put me thinking my brain into gear 
Um, and it was done in seconds, really, in minutes. Mm. You know? And I thought, this is a much easier way of doing things. And somebody asked in chat before we started, what was I vaping on? Well, there you go. It's the crack of is what I'm vaping on. And yours is weak the same way, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've used a bit of uh, piping, um, cotton piping in this, but it works beautifully. So there you go. Well, it's you, definitely the way to go. You give everybody uh, a demo of that because I have, strangely enough, managed to flood this. That's how well this stuff wicks. Yeah, that's a problem with cotton. It can overwick. But um, I had a similar problem with the, with the scrape, and somebody did ask as well before, what do I prefer, the scrape or the spheroid? Um, I'm a whipped up. I think it was asked that question. I'm a huge spheroid fan. Um, when the scrape is working properly, it's an absolute star. But it's so easy for it to overwick. Yes. Now at the minute, I've just used a very simple um, idea because it overwicks. And I took that off the wrong way. That was very stupid of me. I've got a similar problem to Mr. Dawn now. But never mind. I just stuck another bit of cotton on. Um, just over the top. Because it was over wicking. Uh, fine. No problem. Um, I do know the higher the um, wattage or voltage that you vape at. Means... It sort of doesn't matter if it overwicks so much, but as I just tend to be a 3.7 person, mm. it can be a problem. So, at the moment, because it's early days with the scrape, I still would have to say of the two, um, the spheroid is still my choice. And the good news is I've just repaired my spheroid. I put a new um, grommet in and a, a new O-ring. Can't be bad. That's what I was. Can't be bad. But it's a little bit tight, so I have to have a look see why it's a bit tight on the vape at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I just thought it was an easier way of doing things because I've got so many um, Jennies sitting here and I really, really do not like and do not want to go back to mesh. Exactly I don't like right. it. Too much fuss and palaver. Well, yes, yes. And, and funnily enough, during the course of that, people have been typing into chat and saying, with cotton, less is more. And it's true. It wicks like an absolute beast. And when I've soaked that, uh, I put too much juice on the, the loop over the top. So I've just dried that out a little bit. And it's now mm -hmm. wicking exactly the way you would want it to. And seriously, mm -hmm. it's performing. I'll show you. Mental's asking, how does the cotton compare to stainless steel rope and mesh? Uh, it's wicking a damn sight better. The rope with a mesh top is, uh, is, is very, 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 very good in comparison to either silica or, in my opinion, uh, the tighter meshes, the 400 meshes. Um, this, crikey Moses, I've never known anything wick like this bootlace stuff and this thin string. Uh, as, as an example, and I, I'll, have I got it in with us? No. Um, there's so many devices here. I've, I've wicked um, a K-Phone 3.1 um, with the thin stuff and mm -hmm. one strand, and the wick is no longer than half an inch, and that thing's banging it out. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, I might see if I can find it during the, the next advert. Plus the other thing about the cotton, Dave, I'm sure you'll agree with me about this. You don't get that initial taste that a, a new mesh always gives you, and stainless steel rope certainly gives you, and even silica will give you. Um, with cotton, there's none of that. It's straight away the flavour. Mm. And that's really a big, big positive. I've got to say, I'm a convert. Um, 
He said, so I went across to Ireland and got shown the cotton wicking over there. Uh, it's it's more or less all I've been using. I've got it. Uh, yes, DJ H has just said, love to see that K phone. I'll do that next week. I'll, I'll redo it next week. It's a, a pseudo micro curved, a curved, rewind. It's a curved pseudo micro coil with the one strand of this thin stuff. And it's that thin, this stuff, that I cannot even get the calipers down to measure it. It just squashes it away and nothing. Um, it, it's really, really fine. Um, but I, I'll, I'll re-wick the K-Fun with it next week. And it's so easy to do. The one thing you'll need, if you, if you want to wick along, and believe me, it's so easy you'll want to, is a brown um, blunt hypodermic. That's exactly the right size, a brown one. You know, the ones that have got the little brown connector thing on. That's exactly mm. the right size for this cotton wick to go through. And believe me, it works an absolute charm. We'll do that one next week. That'll be an interesting one, I think. Um, I quite look forward to that. What Can else I answer another question that's been thrown? Yeah. Um, someone asked, was the Kraken you were using there a clone or an original? Uh, it's a real one. It's, it's an, orig right. an original Kraken. And this is the clone that I need. And, and I, to be honest, I had a look at a number of clone Krakens uh, at the weekend, and I don't think they're clones. I think they're shiny, not brushed, but otherwise, I cannot see much of a difference between them. I will, however, um, wait a while and see what comes through, for I too have ordered one. Uh, but I was quite impressed by what, it, what I saw. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll have a blast with the uh, with the K phone. Well, hopefully, I've got a K phone on order. Hopefully, mine arrives because uh, I would be interested to uh, see how to do all this. It, it's it, it's actually so easy you wouldn't believe. So you've got a week to get brown needles. I mean, don't um, didn't get sharp ones. Get blunt ones, um, or or a thick bodkin darning needle. No shorts, John and Matt. No. And there's no shorts the way anything works, the way this system works on here either. Yes. Inside anyway. the centre post, they are different, bordering on dangerous. Whip it up's asking where to get the brown needles from. I got mine off eBay ages ago. Mm -hmm. Ages ago. That's the place to go. Anyway, we'd better shoot into the adverts. And then I did see. There was a fair oh, amount. Time's flying. I know it's Stott Spy. I did see there was a fair amount of talk about Watts. So we'll what? have a Watts. We'll, oh, we'll what? talk about Watts because there's a fair few beginners. And hello, Jim. Jim Lacey, was it? New, brand new to us. Aye. Been vaping seven days and he's come to join us. Welcome on board, well, Sunshine. This is the right show. So we're going to try and, and help beginners, aren't we, Dave? Absolutely, yes. So I've got a bit on watch that comes up after the adverts, which we'd better take, otherwise we'll not get to them. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Div not gone anywhere. We'll be back in a bit. How youngin.
Save the Six. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. And we're back in the room. Sorry, I got a little bit uh, distracted. Distracted? I won't tell you why. I kind of see you for, for paper. What? Are you in there somewhere? Mm. Mm. Oh, good God. <clears throat> yeah. Seems to work all right, this, uh, this bootless cotton in this. Aye. It's rather pleasant, in fact. But it is being used at relatively high watts. I've got this one set to 11 watts, is where I'm at. Yes, foggy day in England town. I tell you what, if I go to, if I go to the main camp, you can see it floating about. Look at this, cross here. This little, look, God, they're gorgeous. <laughs> uh, it's just like a fog rising from me feet. Um, it possibly is. It, no, it's not. No, I've had a bath. There's no stench coming off, and if there was, it would be green fog. Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. I loved it. I it's brilliant. I love sitting in the front room with something set up like that when the sun's coming through the slats in the Venetian blinds. You know how to make a Venetian blind, don't you, Chris? Stick your finger in his eyes. Aye, exactly right. Um, I love doing that and just watching. Been around you too long. I'm starting to think like. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, and just <laughs> just sit watching the. I might I might shoot some some video with some nice piano music behind it of the patterns in the vapor, as it just waddles around the room. It's gorgeous. It's lovely. But yes, Watts. Do you love Watts? You love Watts, don't you, Chris? I've never understood the bookers. Have I you not? Know well, I know. Um, a while ago, I sat down and I actually did a bit of what's because a lot of people have got no idea what's what. You see what I did there? I don't know what's what. Eh? Well, this might show you what's what and it, it, it talks about our words. It's easier to play it and see. Um, forgive the haircut. Worky swine. And that's the wrong one, David. Click that one. Okay. Here, in the lab, all right, the dining room, um, I'm going to have a little bit of a play today. Now, you'll see here, two metres and what looks like a load of gubbins. And it is a load of gubbins. What it is, is here we have a voltmeter. And here we have the fluke set up to read, in this case, amps. Uh, which I need a zero and what I want to do is to test out two or three batteries to see what kind of power we're getting out of them and this is because I want to see what happens with ordinary batteries and ordinary atomizers. Now in this case I've picked up a low resistance 510 which I've had for a while, and I know that this reads 1.5 ohms. So let's connect that up onto the amp sniffer, like so. And then we'll clag on. In this case, it's an Apollo battery. Um, standard Ego format, if you like. So we we'll screw that on. More fingers and thumbs, there we go. Screw that on to the measuring equipment, as you might see. Alrighty, now first thing to do is listen for the sizzle, and there's the sizzle. As you can see, two amps at 3.04 ohms, two amps at 3.04, uh, which means we're getting 6.08 watts of power from that setup. So a low resistance 510 onto that Apollo eSig battery uh, will give us, let's do it again and check that it's right, 3.05, two amps it says there, 3.03, 3.02. You can see that we're losing voltage as the, as the battery drains a little, which tells me that that particular battery isn't um, 
regulated to a, a particular voltage it's dropping as it goes so let's take that one off as you do and let's screw on this is the um, the draw checking battery that I got from Vapor World. Again, it is what it is. Let's screw it on. I haven't tried this. These are just picked up out of the box. And press the button. Listen for the sizzle. And there we go. 2.2 amps, 2.1 amps at 3.1 volts. We'll do that one again. 2.1 amps at 3.1 and then dropping volts um, 2.1 times through <laughs> it gives you more <laughs> I'll work the figures out and I'll put them on screen 2.1 times 3.1 2.1 times 3.1 if I brought a calculator I could have worked it out I didn't what an idiot okay let's take that one off And let's take a Janty Neo battery, one of the new ones. Let's see what that does. This is interesting. You'd expect them all to perform the same, wouldn't you? Check for sizzle. And look at that. 1.7 amps, 2.7 volts. Isn't that interesting? We'll do that again. 1.8 amps, 2.7 volts. Well, I didn't expect that. Again, I'll put the wattage up later on. I did not expect that at all. Now, what I'm going to do is take off my Odysseus from this kicked GGTS, and I'm going to screw that on. And let's see what we get out of that. Now I know what I've got this set to. I think we're in. Press the button. No. There we go. 2.5 amps at 3.7, 3.6. We'll do that one more time. 2.6 amps at 3.6. One more time. 2.5 amps at 3.6 is what we're getting out. Right, I'm going to disconnect that. And I'll sort out um, what they are. You'll see the wattages go up. But as you can see, not all batteries are created equal. Now, that's it's not meant to do anything other than just measure and see. I'm not making any great um, prognostications and that is with as I've said a low resistance atomizer which does actually scope out at 1.5 ohms um, and patently there are devices that work well with that and devices that don't but it's an interesting exercise nonetheless to have a look at these things and see how it works and we'll talk about it more back in the studio which is where we're going to go now back to the studio and in the studio is back where we are. Um, and yes, somebody did mention the quiff. I had hair. That was 14 months ago. 14, one, four. A year and two months since I recorded that piece. And look how much hair I've lost. It's ridiculous. Absolutely shocking. Go to camera three, David. Look at that. Never mind. Never mind. So yes, what? If you use a standard Ego, you will be running, if it's Fresh out the factory with a full charge, a standard Ego battery from Joytech runs at 5.2 watts. And if you consider watts as being like the temperature of your oven, Chris. Yes? Mm. Mm. <laughs> the, 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 At least you didn't mention the bloody light bulb again. No, no light bulb. Just I'll just just going to go like temperature of the oven. We'll go to light bulbs later. I'm putting on screen a picture of a blank face. Um. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, the fact of the matter is, watts is just a measure of heat. 
right? And with something like a cotton wick, this is the seamless link you see, Chris. With, oh. with something like a cotton wick, I'm here to tell you, you might want to turn your watts up if you're using a 134 or a VTR or an MVP version 2 or a kick or anything else because these cotton wicks wick so fast you need more heat to be able to vaporize the e-liquid that's coming up the wick that was why I thought I would put that little wattage thing in there you can if you wish do everything by voltage and if you work with the same resistance atomizing device all mm. the time then voltage and wattage you can more or less interchange them they'll not be the same numbers but halfway up the dial they'll still be halfway up the dial as long as you never change your resistance but as you saw when I wound the coil for this it's just six turns that was it oh Heiko's gone down from 16 to 12 watts when he went to cotton it depends on how I suppose how much cotton you use as we've said less is more um, and yeah, it changes the flavour as well when you turn it down. Have you noticed that, Chris? Well, I mean, I'm running the. I've picked up, put the scrape on here now, mm -hmm. and that's running at three point seven volts because it's not. It's just on the just GG. It's not kicked or anything, and it works perfectly well. Well, there's no wrong with that, is there? It works perfectly well on here. And Nikki, um, Nikki I've, I've got to dive in, and Nikki Tranter is saying that she uses, he, she, uses um, three and a half watts on the VAMO with the Kfun Micro Cotton. Uh, Sav goes eight to nine and a half. Um, 15 watts on Mrs. Lord's Custard Cream, 1.8 dual coil Micro Cotton Wicks. Oh, I've just had a thought. I can dual coil this. Two side by side. They could. Might have a look at that. Disco Desk starts at seven and goes up to nine as the coil ages. Mark Shaw said, Blimey now, where did that air go? I think that was him. Um, yes. I, I did. And Silver Zero said, The watch setting he uses completely depends on which flavour of e liquid I'm vaping. It seems dessert vapes taste better at lower wattages, but fruit and menthols are better at higher setting. Yeah, that's funny actually, because the higher I turn this one up with the juice I'm using, which is sweet leaf uh, tobacco with a little bit of caramel in, um, the higher I turn it up, the sweeter it gets. Sorry, Chris, I interrupted you. Mm. No, it's just if I'm using um, a device on the displays watts. I usually set it at 8.5. I don't know how that relates to my 3.7, which I obviously get on the GG being a manual device. Well, the, the, the GG will vary. When you put a freshly charged battery in, it'll give you 4.2 volts for a while. And it'll start slowly dropping down in volts, and it should finish it around about 3.3. You'll you'll not be able to, You wouldn't enjoy it when it gets to 3.3, so you're getting a slightly decrease in um, voltage right the way through the battery. Mm. That's that's where the likes of the kick and the uh, the electronic style mods, the generation three mods, come in because the the wattage controlled. So you set it to ten watts, it gives you ten watts, and when there's not enough chuck in the battery to do that, it says charge me. Mm. Um, it's like I mean you know, Sav is is, is permanently at, at kind of nine ish, nine and a half ish. And she knows when it needs a charge because the little I'm running out of juice indicator tells us so, uh, mm. which is all good, you know. That's probably confused I the hell out of everybody. It, it still confuses the hell out of me. I mean, I've got a kick and I look at it now and again mm. and I haven't got a clue how to use it. You set it to um, an, a, a, a wattage that you like, stick it in the device and forget about it. I've got one in here. It's set to 11 watts, and that's where it sits. And that's it. Yes, I never even think John, about it. My cracking stainless steel looked like brass did it in the lighting. That's because the GG's um, brass and steel. So it gives that look. Plus, I've got a brass tip that I had in. So there you go. 
Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's all to do with white balance and, and, and things like that. It's all clever stuff. We, uh, we appear to have gotten to the end of the hour and we haven't done everything oh, we said. Um, How? I was just starting to learn things. This is why I've never learned, you see, viewers. This is why I, I don't normally watch. The shows are too short at day. Well, it's, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? Ah, uh, it's what the way it goes, isn't it? What will be, will be. <laughs> que sera, sera. Jim, Jim, Jim Lacey's asking if we're having a lock in. That's on Friday night on our Y4 radio. <laughs> it is, and tonight I think Phil's on our Y4 starting about now. Yes, he's starting about now, and, and I hate trampling over anybody's feet like that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do apologise for not covering everything that we said we are going to do. We didn't get round to the crimps. That's two pieces I've been going to do over the last few weeks where I haven't actually got round to finishing everything I had sorted out. And do you know why? Do you know why, Chris? I talk too much. No. It's because chat is so good. They keep on reminding us of stuff they need to know. Well, that's what it's all about. It's their show. Exactly. And I mean, any questions, they've got to fire at it, otherwise, if we don't know it, and you never know, there's a good chance I don't know it. There is always that, yes. So, so you're helping me learn it. Well, thank you very much. And Silver Zero said, <laughs> somebody says, uh, somebody's got to keep me on me toes. <laughs> I'm a married man, mate, I know that only too well. You'd be surprised <laughs> how well trained I am, really, you would. Um, Woolly Vapen said, we're the best kind of chat, he's not wrong. Um, <laughs> Entropy said it's all right, Midge. Too much. Oh, it's that's right, Midge. Too much time admiring Dave's balls. I'm here to tell you, nobody can spend too much time admiring my balls. And he said, holding them up just to be sure nobody got the wrong idea. Um, we've got to go. We really have got to go. I, I thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we, you've got no idea how much we appreciate it and how much it thrills me when I sit and see people are sitting enjoying the drivel that we do and the sense that Kat speaks. But it's been another show, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was a joke. Bugger. Oh, I don't know. Um, no, you have. As usual, you've been great. Don't forget, please, to tune in tomorrow night again at 9 o'clock for Marco Van Basten with Vapor Scene, followed by our German language program, DE Talk. And yes, we've taken on board about a deuce doing a show. The offer's there. If they want to come and do it, we'll sort it out. Um, Absolutely. Wednesday night, Team Talk again, isn't it? Aye. So Team, team talk, talk on Wednesday night, bring plenty of booze um, and prepare to have a good old belly laugh because I'm sure it will be. It's always good. I think Team Talk's brilliant. Thursday night we've got VT talk um, and we'll be talking about all sorts of stuff. There's stuff happening left, right and centre. I'm going to bring you right up to date with that. And then on Sunday night, once again, it's Mr Dave Kitson with Dave's Tackle Box. But don't forget, 10 o'clock every night during the course of the week, RY4 Radio is on doing what it does, which it does so well. So go from here to there. And until the next time we see you, vape on. Vip hard and don't let the bastards grind you down. Say night night, Chris. Night night. Night everybody.